Live from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2017. Brought to you by Docker and support from its ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, joined with Jim Kabilis. Happy to have at the end of our two days of live coverage here of DockerCon 2017 on theCUBE, uh, we've got a practitioner, and also what was one that did a great presentation in the keynote this morning. Happy to welcome Swami Kosher Lakota, who is the Global Head of Infrastructure and Operations with Visa. Uh, so uh, Swami, welcome in uh, what's in your wallet. Uh, yes. <laughs> I all have Visa cards in the yeah. wallet. <laughs> right. In your container. Right. Yeah. Docker that, 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 that's a good one, Jim. I, I like that. So, uh, you know, we, we were we were really impressed. I tell you, social media was lighting up, going mm -hmm. through your case study, talking about how you know it's kind of the before, you know, very much a virtualized environment looks like many data centers. I went through and you know that digital transformation, if you will, is to uh, what you're doing. Uh, before we get into kind of your case studies, tell us just a little bit about you, your role, you know, how much you're flying around the world, uh, you know. With, with the infrastructure and ops. Right, so I'm responsible for uh, Visa Inc's uh, operations and infrastructure. So my responsibility is to kind of run everything that's inside Visa that does the uh, payment processing. So that's my responsibility. I travel a lot, uh, we have a global team. Visa is a global company. So I'm on the road a lot. Yeah, so I, I love the case study you did today mm -hmm. because it's always what we want to do as analysts. Is, but let's talk about the pain points, let's paint the before, you know, how did everything go through and point the after. So we want to encapsulate a little bit of that. Uh, as I said, highly virtualized environment. What was what was the pain point? What was the objective? Uh, you know, I, I don't think any executive came down and said, hey, uh, containers are awesome, let's just do stuff because it sounds cool. Uh, you know, what, what, what was the real business driver uh, for what you were doing? Right, so like I mentioned in the keynote, uh, the number one priority that we have for my organization is to make developers productive. You know, we take this as a challenge uh, where any employee, a developer who joins Visa, we want them to be able to write code and publish code into production on the same day. That's what we are aspiring to go, that was the driver. So we're looking at every minute of uh, what, it, what it takes to get the provisioning and we're trying to streamline it so that we can deliver that vision quickly. Great, and virtualized environment, uh, you know, going to containerize. Um, can you talk, how big a scope is this? You know, did it change your underlying infrastructure itself? Or, you know, can, can you maybe flesh that out a little bit for us? Right, so when I talk about provisioning, or in, in general managing operations for a large organization, or large enterprise, I look at it from two dimensions. One the one-time provisioning, but then most of the challenges and the opportunities are in the life cycle, right? Yes, virtualization solved the one-time provisioning, but we haven't really solved the managing the life cycle, right? You know, it still takes, even if it takes uh, a one day to two day to provision the virtual image, the pre-provisioning task, post-provisioning task, and care and feeding of it, whether it's patching and maintenance, doing tech refresh, it's still very intrusive, very intrusive and very painful. So when we looked at the whole problem, we wanted to solve all of them at once, and that's when the containerization and microservices attracted us. Okay. And Swami, when this rolled out, I mean, is this 100% your environment in this new one, or have you been doing a phased approach? You know, how, how does it look today? I wish it's 100%, yeah. uh, but uh, we are in the early stages. You know, we have one application. Uh, it is now um, a, a tower of success, and uh, we have about five other application teams that are looking into it. Um, and then we build more towers of success, and then this becomes kind of like the part of the standard offering. So the initial implementation was a pilot, a showcase of the technology, or explain where the idea for this uh, this initial implementation came from. Was it driven from the business level or from the technical level? Uh, it's a partnership between the application team and the infrastructure team. Okay. The boundaries between the two teams are kind of blurring. Uh -huh. And at Visa, one of the great things that we have is that we collaborate very well internally. So when we wanted to do uh, have this mission of making developers productive on the same day, when an application team is going through the refactoring process, we basically said, hey, maybe we can join forces, mm -hmm. and you know, we have a, a, a good collaboration, and, and we said, let's uh, do it together. So there was a refactoring project already underway, and then containers and Docker came into the 
that overall equation essentially or that, so, that, that they that, both that came project. at the same time okay they both came at, it's a perfect okay. it's a perfect marriage at that mm -hmm. time okay right? the timing of when we want to uh, do refactoring and the timing of when we want uh, the you know, uh, containers came at the same time. So you say it was a success, and that it essentially it was proved out internally within your development organization and other uh, other. Uh, tell us other what other uh, areas of Visa are um, likely to become containerized fairly soon in terms of the core applications. There are about five other groups that we are looking at um, that still is work in progress. Okay. The next use case that I'm uh, excited about is the kind of like the batch use case, right? Uh, that's about uh, as much as I can say about the rest of the five workloads. Okay. Right. Understood. Yeah. So, Swami, there, there's a certain set of data services that you get when you have a virtualized environment. Can, can you talk to us a little bit about that difference going to containers as to how much was seamless, how much you know, did you have to plan? I, I, I think about things like you know, high availability, security, um, that I'm, I'm sure are important to you guys. Right, so see with the um, when the way. Yeah, so the way we have done the implementation is to kind of preserve the same high standards that we have with uh, availability and security as well. In fact, I would argue that uh, availability is higher because now we have instrumented those microservices in a way where we know exactly when we need the help of another service, right? And then we can create this. So from an availability perspective, it's better than what we have today, which is already good, right? Because we can scale up and down. We know when the system is going, uh, needs more resources. And from a security perspective, even before the implementation, we made sure that uh, yeah, it, it is rock solid and it has the right controls for us. Yeah. Um one of the slides we liked uh, that you did in the presentation this morning was talking about utilization. Right. We know that you know most companies are not utilizing most of it. First of all, forecasting what you're going to use when you're going to use it is you know really tough. You either overdo it, you underdo it. You know you've got way too much gear sitting there. Um, you, you're really transforming yourself to be an internal service provider. Um, do you have any you know key metrics as to how much greater utilization, what that means to the business, uh, you know, just to, to total cost uh, that you need right. to be concerned with? See, the absolute numbers of uh, we'd like to see our infrastructure be 90% utilized, 80% wow. utilized right. is kind of old school in That's my mind. That's audacious. That's, you know. you know. That's, that's your goal. Say that again? That's, that's your, your goal. target utilization. That's well, I don't have a target utilization. Oh. Okay. That's what I'm saying is that that uh, um, you know. Using a particular watermark as your target utilization right. is old school. It should oh, okay. be elastic. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes when we do campaigns, we don't know what type of a workload we would get. We just are focusing on just run enough and then only grow when you need. This is why we call it as just-in-time infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? That way it is only provision when you need it. When you're done with it, we'll deprovision, mm -hmm. right? With the microservices and how fast we can get the containers, you could do that. Okay, how about the operational impact of what you're doing? How much retraining did you do? Were there professional services you need to have get, come in? Um, you know, was it changing roles or was there any changing headcount? I know it's just the one application you've done so far, but wh where is it today? What do you see as you roll this out further? You know, from a operational perspective, the skill set mix will change. You know, instead of uh, having a eyes on glass when you have an operational issue, you know, you're working uh, in a predictive environment where you can uh, proactively say that a particular outage can occur. So the skill set may change, but in terms of the size and scale of the operation, at least the early stages that we are in, we don't see a whole lot of shifts there. Yeah. Swami, were there any surprises when you rolled this out or anything that you look back that you say, okay, well, now when I go to the next five groups, I'll be able to say, oh, we'll do this faster. Or you need to plan this a little bit differently. Right. But what lessons learned can you right. share? So there are about four lessons learned that I mentioned. You know, one is uh, it's very important to have the right granularity for your service. Right? When you take a monolithic service and then divide it into you know, 10, 12 microservices, you got to make sure that the granularity is right. That's number one. And you don't want it to be overly granular or you don't want to keep it uh, monolithic. And the second thing is, uh, you know, you are reducing that to microservices, however, from a memory perspective, you have to make sure that uh, you're not asking for a whole lot of memory as well. You cannot have the same heap size as that of a big monolithic service. Microservices needs to have smaller footprint so you can run more and get the more utilization of your hardware. Because everything is memory bound. You know, even in your virtual environment, it's not the CPU, it's all memory bound. All right, uh, Swami, 
you know, you've been interacting with a lot of people the show. What, what's your take of the show so far? Interaction with your peers. Uh, are you able to get find a lot of other companies that are have similar challenges that, that, that you can kind of share experiences with? So a couple of things that uh, that I liked about the uh, are the announcement that uh, Docker has made. One, the enhancements that they're making on the security are, are very valuable, right? And then the whole notion about uh, secure supply chain um, is very relevant. And the second thing that I liked is um, how easy it is now to take a virtual workload and then uh, putting them uh, in, the, in, the, in the container, right? Uh, so I think the announcement that they have made was attractive. As far as the expo floor is concerned, you know, we're not putting our workloads in public clouds anytime soon. We're still building private clouds and then you know hosting it in service. There's a lot of people on the expo where they're offering services for the cloud. You know, for example, Datadog and stuff like that. Um, I wish uh, we had seen more on how to manage large container deployments from an operations perspective mm -hmm. and any innovation there. Uh, but I also haven't had a chance to completely sweep through the floor. Also, yeah. Um, you know, in the keynote, I heard it was, uh, you know, containers are everywhere you want to be. Uh, did, did they take the tagline from Visa, everywhere you want to be, you know? <laughs> maybe, maybe. I did not notice it, but yeah. All right, Swami, so I mean, I want to give you the final word. As, as you look out, um, you know, things you're excited about in the ecosystem, or anything, the feedback that you'd give uh, to be able, be able to make your job easier, uh, you know, help you move this uh, forward, forward uh, even more into your environment. You know, I think uh, the one thing that I would say is that uh, in order to be able to transform enterprise IT and take the innovation as rapidly as we would like to have, every enterprise, the infrastructure and application teams have to partner. And the barriers between them should be collapsed and they should uh, you know, innovate together, collaborate together. That I would say is number one. And number two, the ecosystem is becoming complex, right? It's difficult to navigate uh, you know, what should be, because for every single member of a partner of the ecosystem, you have more than one choice. So picking up the right stack is uh, very important as well. well. Swami, really appreciate you joining us, uh, sharing online, uh, and uh, you know, the, the really great kind of encapsulation notes. Uh, I, I had said uh, you know, early on in this, the, this wave of Docker, it was like, oh, maybe Docker can help free us from the infrastructure, but of course we know there's relationships, they need to go together. Um, and you know, as we're maturing, that complexity is getting better. So Excellent. thank you so much for joining us and sharing with this community and ours. Jim and I will be back with our wrap up here from the two days of live coverage. Thanks for watching theCUBE.